Today we build a beautiful, smart, height adjustable office table from Walnut Wood. Enjoy! This Christmas I wanted to give something special to my wife, so I decided to craft my very first tabletop from European Walnut for her. I didn't have a circular saw back then, so I used my jigsaw and a fence to get one straight side per board. With one side done, it was easy to get another parallel face using my table saw. Before gluing them together later, I also hand planed the sides again just to make sure they were nicely jointable. Next, my favorite part. Planning until all boards look good as fuck and are the same height. After that was done, I arranged the boards to my liking and marked the faces I want to connect later. I also alternated the crane just for the memes, I think the arrangement came out pretty nicely. Gluing up took a bit of experimenting around. I clamped various supporting boards to the tabletop as well as applying pressure punctually with some more sacrificial pieces. And to my surprise, honestly, it turned out damn nicely. Everything was really flat and connected properly. Then, after finally taking the dive of buying a circular saw, it was about time I cut the board to its final dimensions. And proceeded to assemble the full metal height adjustable base, which only took me about 15 minutes. That was a quick build. Back inside, I checked if the tabletop fit the table and if all electronics work properly. I wanted to add some smart features to the office desk, so I decided to buy a cable hub with included USB slots as well as a dimmable light. And after figuring out the proper positions of the hardware, I went over to Fusion 360 and designed the templates for routing, which I cut out using my Shapeoko CNC. I never did template routing before, so I went the safe route and tested it out on a piece of MDF before ruining my Walnut board. Then I checked if my templates fit the dimensions of my hardware and in case it didn't I fine adjusted the MDF parts with my file until I was satisfied. Then I created a quick plate extension for my palm router from a thin scrap piece of red teak and did another test cut which worked wonderfully. Back to the tabletop. I removed glue squeeze out with my Japanese scanner and then proceeded to present both sides with an 80 grid. I really like how it looks thus far, but I had yet another little something in mind I really wanted to try out for the first time. So, thus far, that's good. Um, I never tried using epoxy, but I bought some from a German manufacturer called Epodex, as well as pigment paste, black one. And I'm going to give it a shot. We are going to fill up all the holes and crack that are still there um, from the wood with black epoxy, and I hope everything works out well. It's not much of a layer, just a tiny little one for each and every crack or hole or whatsoever. So I think everything is going to turn out nicely, hopefully. At first I gotta tape everything up um, because epoxy is quite um, liquid, you could say, viscous. And it loves to drip out of each and every crack, which is still there. So I need to tape everything up nicely and then I'm gonna let gravity do the work up until everything hardens out. Let's go. The epoxy is a simple 2 to 1 mix, so I took 10 grams of resin and 5 grams of hardener and stirred it together with a pigment paste using a scrap piece of wood. Never did epoxy before, so I played it safe and filled the holes and cracks on the back side of my tabletop before getting to the main top later. 
So I think that's about it for most cracks. Um, on the downside, on the back side, I'm going to see how everything hardens out and I'm trying to not breathe anything in because I heard that epoxy can be very, very dangerous to your health over time. <sighs> that's better. So I'm gonna try and save my life as best as I can. Yeah, um, I hope everything works out nicely and that everything is going to harden as I expect it to be. Those were only like 15 grams. Um, yeah, that's not much. <laughs> Next day rolled around and I tried to remove the overflowed cured epoxy. No idea what the best way was to do so, so I tried sanding with a 40 grit. So I encountered a problem here. I thought that the epoxy was already dried completely or hardened out, but it didn't seem to be that way on the thicker parts. It's probably because I'm having my workshop basically outside and yeah, <laughs> the temperatures are pretty low at the moment. They are above 10 degrees Celsius, but still, it didn't harden out completely yet, so I got a lot of splatter here. So I need to um, let it harden for a bunch of hours more. Probably also this part right here with the thick epoxy layer. And I noticed that if I press my finger into here, I can still see my, yeah, my fingerprint. So that should have been an indicator. But, well, the more you learn. So instead of removing the epoxy, I filled parts of the visible top of the table with epoxy too. Two days later I tried sanding again, which took me about 30 minutes. The result looked great, but the way to get there was just not optimal. So I went a different route for the visible top and used my block plane to flatten the epoxy parts first and then started to sand. This took me not even 10 minutes and turned out wonderfully. Way better and more efficient than just sanding. Now it's getting real serious. I use double-sided tape to fix my templates in place. And then I proceeded with my palm router as well as chiseling out the corners until the lamp fit. Next came cutting out the rectangular hole for the cable hub. I marked the middle point of the rectangle and after taking some measurements I drew a fitting one around the center point. Next I drilled some quick holes such that I can get a proper cut done with my jigsaw. Nice. Fingers crossed. Oh god, that fits perfectly. This one fits so damn well, holy shit. For even more cable management, I wanted to also include a cable grommet. So I cut a template again on my CNC as well as the one at this to seal the hole. Then it was off to routing again. Oh boy. Oh god, I really messed this one up big time yesterday. But hey, it wouldn't be wood if you couldn't fix it somehow, so let's go. Well, I guess that's back to the drawing board. Bigger and more stable template, bigger walnut disc. And after a metric fuck ton of double-sided tape later... Yes, there we go, that worked out way better, that looks seriously smooth, very nice. And now we are going to make use of this um, round drill bit once again to try to put a hole into here. I actually bought a new set with a bigger hole and I hope it's going to work out. The original drill hole was off-center now, so I couldn't get a proper grip on the wood. Easy fix though by using C8 glue and a scrap piece of wood. I was then able to drill a perfectly centered hole. It fits in very nice and snug, very satisfied with that. Looking really good, I'm so glad that I redid the palm router cut. And yeah, all that's really left to do is to bring it onto the same height as the table. So let's go. 
I thought this one would take me longer, but it was literally a matter of two minutes to send the walnut down with a 40 crit. Ah, oh, this is gonna be so satisfying. Ah, oh, <laughs> the sound of it, the sound it makes. Ah, oh, awesome, looks so good. And all that's left were some finishing touches. With a 6mm radius round over bit, I managed to give the table and all inserts a refined look. And a 45 degree chamfer bit for the front side snuck really nicely into the live edge I left on the piece. And next came about two hours of very intimate time between me and my random orbital sender. For each iteration I used a pencil to mark when I could move on to the next grid. Starting everything off with an 80 grid, then a 120, a 160, 240, and finally a 320. I also sanded all sides very carefully with my random orbital as well as by hand. Same for the inserts. Sanding takes really, really long, but the better and more carefully you sand, the more refined your final piece is going to look. So always make sure to sand a lot. Really doesn't matter if it takes a lot of time, as long as your piece is going to look good at the very end. And finally, the moment I was waiting for. Using matte hard wax oil to really make the wood pop. And holy shit, it pops so goddamn hard. The epoxy looks damn beautiful in combination with the European walnut. Last thing to do was to create a cable slot for the lamp. Attach the tabletop to the height adjustable stand and fix the hardware in place. And then it was finally time for the big reveal. I am so satisfied with how my first tabletop turned out. It is functional, it looks absolutely stunning and the epoxy details really make it shine. But most importantly, I learned so many new things along the way by just doing this one project. If you did enjoy what you have seen today, why not subscribe to the channel and leave a like? Also, what could have done better? Make sure to also leave some feedback down there in the comments below. I would really love to hear your constructive criticism. And now I'll let you enjoy a few more shots off the table. Please stay safe and I'll see you in the next video. Have a day. Ciao.